This is an EMI TR90. This is the console version of the machine. There are several different versions of it. You had the BBC style console which was much smaller. You had the rack mounted version and you also had the portable box, two box to three box versions. These are quite hard to get hold of now and quite hard to keep running. This particular machine has been serviced. Uh, I've done a lot of work to it over the last couple of days to get it up and running. It's still got a few problems where it won't play at high speeds properly if I put it to high speed. You may notice it's actually it's running at the right speed, but it's very noisy. But the recorder is now playing. it's not rewinding and fast forwarding properly. The EMI TR90 has a very unusual tape path. Now this machine's missing an arm here which is designed to touch the tape inside the middle of the reel. I can see that being a problem probably why many of people are taking it off. I haven't got one of these arms on any of the EMI's that I've got. But you've got a large roller counter here and that one there operates a large drum style counter and you've got a heavy flywheel which sometimes has a strobe on the top of it to, so that you can make sure the machine's running fast or, or at the correct speed. little tension arm behind there. Then you've got your head path, your tape uh, lifter arms which can be engaged and disengaged. On some machines you have a little chrome little uh, plate here which keeps that arm in place so that when you're rewinding and fast forwarding you get the sound at all times. Then you've got your pinch roller a tension arm here and this one when it's in the when it's in the full deflection space there the machines actually become inoperable the VU meter is actually a PPM meter most PPMs are black with the scale 1 to 7 the EMI's use this particular one where it's minus 40 dB's to plus 15 dB's and it shows here a small box which should be green of minus 10 dB to plus 5 dB which is where you want the recording to be. So as you can see there the recording has been done correctly. If I switch the machine off you'll notice that the meter goes from minus 40 dB all the way to the top of the scale. Now this is quite common on valve gear where the meter will actually be powered to zero rather than the meter being powered to full scale deflection. It's also another way of knowing that the machine is in ready condition. Once the meter reaches zero it means it's pop it, it means it'll be in a condition, a suitable condition to be able to play. Looking at the rest of the controls, we have an input record level control. This ring here is a typical adaptation modification usually associated with the BBC. You can take this ring off and underneath it you have another scale underneath it very similar to the one seen over here. It's very difficult to see in this type of light but all the writing and everything like that is, it's etched into the body of the machine and then it's had China graph pen rubbed over the top of it to give the white lettering. So you've got your record, you've got your meter select, output, line input and what's been recording. Also M, E, B and B2 which I think has got something also to do with the recording conditions. For instance M and E, M means metering the input signal that's actually selected on the switch on the top here. E I'm not quite sure. B1 and B2 is probably to do with the bias and setting up. Then this side you've got here the monitor speaker out output select. So you can hear what's coming out on the output speaker. And the switch here to turn the monitor speaker on and off. And then an output level control. But there's also this large control here which is also an output level control. So if I... 
but it's not a huge deflection. Whether or not it's supposed to be like that, I don't know whether or not there's a fault there. Then you've got the record button, which is hidden behind a large chrome sort of like disc to, to sort of like stop it from being pressed accidentally. The machine has logic controls up here, which is your spool control, replay and off. There should be a light there, there isn't. You've got one there. When in spool mode, you've got a large control knob here that you turn. Now, although the machine is running, it's not running as quick as it could be. But since I put it in the other direction, you can see that that should be rewinding at full, at full speed, but it can't. At the top of the recorder, normally located by switches in the back of the machine, you've got a remote control switch, so either this machine is controlled by the mixing desk, and then you've got the size of the reels adapter. So for instance, for small reels you have it set to Cine, for large reels you have it set to Nab. In between the two reels there, you've got the bias controls, which are adjusted for the level on and type of recording you're using, sorry, the type of tape that you're using. For instance, this green tape on this machine is uh, a formulation of scotch. The speed control, which is recessed into the machine that can only be operated by a screwdriver. This is more than likely to stop an engineer from changing the speed during recording. Underneath the machine you have one amplifier. This is a mono recorder. The amplifier's preset controls are available from the front of the machine. You can adjust the controls hidden underneath these plates. If this machine was stereo, you'd have one of these up here. You'd also have a second power supply here. This speaker would be fitted underneath the recorder, and the recorder then the electronics inside the recorder would be a little bit more sort of like congested and stuff like that. You have an extra monitor amplifier installed underneath the tape deck. You'd also need a six-way junction box so that the power was distributed correctly. The TR90 was a editing machine. The Radiophonic Workshop had them, uh, but one of the more popular machines they used was the Levers Rich. This is very similar to the one that the Radiophonic Workshop would have used, except this one's a stereo machine. Almost all the machines in the Radiophonic Workshop were mono. Later on in life, things like the a80 over in the far corner there replaced the TR90s and the BTR2s and the levers riches in the studios. The B67s were also another machine that were popular. As you can see, this machine is quite a monster compared to the others. It's very tall. It's probably one of the biggest console machines I've got here. It's uh, bigger than the C37. I may not have a lot to give, but what I got I'll give to you.